What's going on, Ambitious Vet? Welcome to another episode of the Ambitious Vet Show. I'm your host, Chris Hoffman. I'm a Marine Corps veteran, surviving sales trainer, author, and award-winning entrepreneur who realized that immediate transition education expires when you desire more than just your basic needs being met. In 2017, going on 2018, we launched this personal development show, really just designed to dive into the trenches with today's top subject matter experts, share inspiring transition stories, and provide master classes to equip you with the realist per, realistic perspective on how to just continue to grow and advance in the everyday trenches of your life. I hope you enjoy this episode as much as I did. Uh, I always struggled with feeling confident. Like I lacked confidence in, in what I was doing because I felt like I wasn't capable, right? And, and maybe it was because I wasn't happy with what I wasn't like super passionate about, um, flying helicopters, but I thought it was cool. And, and along the lines, people always told me what was best for me in my career. Mm -hmm. And maybe that, that's how I got to aviation. Well, then. The Military Infantry Conference is the largest gathering of influential leaders, transitioning service members, executives, entrepreneurs in the military space. It's ongoing the fifth iteration this year. Mick has quickly grown into a powerful community of military influencers who understand this, the importance of mentorship, storytelling, and collaboration. You see, Military Infantry Conference will convene this year in Las Vegas, Nevada, from 26th, October 26th to the 29th, where over 2,000 plus service members, veterans, and military spouses from around the world will gather to network, explore ideas, be inspired to find solutions, and make a real difference. This event is a full four day experience. The festivities begin with a series of workshops with a jam packed schedule of keynotes, breakout sessions, and interactive experiences throughout the whole week. Me, Personally, I will be leading a breakout session on Thursday morning. First thing, you get to wake up with me in person, and I will be leading, uh, you know, breaking through to uh, higher levels of personal achievement post military. And I promise you, I'm bringing a framework that you've never heard of before that's going to help you break through a key, key area in your life that you may be feeling like is a mountain to climb. So that's my promise. If you can show up, register for this event and get to Las Vegas and attend not only my breakout session, but network and learn from some of the most effective veterans that have been there and done that and want to share the breadcrumbs to you. If uh, this is something that you are interested in doing, October 26th through the 29th, 2020. Two, that is, depending on when you're listening to this, go and check out militaryinfluencer.com right now. It's time to get into the trenches, dig, dig into your purpose, and, and fire up your life's fulfillment. The Ambitious Vet Podcast starts now. What's going on, Ambitious Vet? We are right back inside the trenches today with uh, Andrew Ar Arbogast. Andrew is a Army retired officer, an Apache helicopter pilot, and Memphis, Tennessee-based veteran and food entrepreneur. As founder of Arbogast Foods LLC, he manages the production, distribution, and sales of Arbo's cheese dip throughout the Southeast United States. Andrew also is part of Bunker Lab's CEO Circle and one of the newest board members of Folds of Honor in Tennessee. And Mr. Vet, I'm super excited to introduce this man, um, mostly because he has that genuine Midwestern vibe to him and that he's kind of like a silent killer. He doesn't have the formal education, but he has that elbow grease and that willpower that just has landmines just fucking run from him. So uh, I, I love that. Thanks for having me, Chris. Cool. Yeah, man, for sure. For sure. So uh, go ahead and fill the introductions to that introduction, man. And uh, yeah, let us know about something that some people wouldn't wouldn't know about you. Um, I'll probably go to one of the most embarrassing ones is uh, I was a, a choir boy in high school. <laughs> 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 yeah, man. Um, I went to this uh, this 
Catholic Benedictine boarding school in Arkansas. Um, it was run by monks. And um, I think it was like my sophomore year. I, I, I don't know how I got led to this point, but I ended up joining like their acapella group called uh, the Subi Tones. And so, um, you know, instead of one of my family members outing me, I figured, why not go ahead and do that here? <laughs> <laughs> is that a real story? Oh yeah, man. That is, uh, that, that's absolutely true. I was also like the, the tenor, like the high pitched one. So, um, I did this, this, um, I can't remember the song, but it's like, Oh yeah. In the jungle or whatever. And I had to do the, you know, that, that thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's some good video, video footage buried somewhere. I'm hoping it'll never resurface, but, uh, I got that going for me. <laughs> Oh, that's great, man. And you said it was connected to monks. So that probably explains why you're so grounded, man, in the moment. You seem like a guy that's just well grounded, man, with everything that you got going on in your everyday life. Man, you know, I, I, I always want to embody that humility. And I, I, it really, it's nothing that I've done. It's in my DNA. My father, you know, I'm kind of his his uh, image in a way. And he's just a very kind man. And um, even though I've I've been able to excel in certain fields, you know, flying helicopters and doing well at corporate and and now kind of being uh, an emerging entrepreneur, I I just, I have to stay true to who I am. And, um, you know, I think my wife has to check me sometimes in private, but, <laughs> but I try to 99% of the time, you know, stay close to the earth. Yeah, no, that's a good wife, man. To keep yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm laughing because I got one and uh, she may listen to this, so I ain't going to say anything specific. Um, but no, Andrew, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on the show, brother. Um, I'm excited to dive into the topic, Ambitious Vet, how to overcome fear, right? You came from an Apache helicopter pilot of over 10 years to climb up the corporate ladder of, the, of a paper mill company, landing it through American corporate partners to now killing it in a cheese dip startup company. I'd love for you to just kind of start with step one of what it was like to get the hell out of the army as an officer and navigating those initial waters. How, what was that like for you? Oh man, it was, um, it, it was, it was pretty challenging, but I was fortunate because I, I did have about six months of being out of command until I was officially out. And so I dove right into um, reading and educating myself and networking on transitioning from, you know, being an officer or being a veteran going into the corporate sector. Um, And I I think the timing of everything, I was very fortunate uh, through American Corporate Partners. They gave me a mentor uh, at International Paper, and this guy just opened up a lot of doors. and so it, that transition from a job perspective, I, I was fortunate. I don't think, you know, everybody has the same opportunities or at least um, as quickly as what I was able to accomplish. But the, the transition really kind of took a, a different direction. I, I get this job offer and, you know, I still have about five months left of active duty time. And, and I, I just I hit a wall. It's like I finally had time. To, to think, and uh, that was a problem because in the Army for 10 years, it's like, go, 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 go. And, you know, through deployments and, and challenges and command and, you know, having uh, kids that were born, you know, at 27 weeks premature, all of this was just like compressed in about a two to three year time frame. And so I had some, some baggage, some issues that I had not dealt with. And so what what allowed me to kind of move toward the next step of being successful at corporates like i had to address those things first and then once i got to the paper mill uh working for international paper it was just like bullets flying but in their world right so i go from army to you know a little downward slope of um of getting ready to to join corporate america to this uh, at the paper mill, did that for a year and uh, wanted to move back home to Memphis where my wife and I are from. And that's when I went to that that real corporate setting that in the end, 
just wasn't for me. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, it's, it's, it sounds like you had some baggage to kind of let go of, which um, I think every ambitious vet can kind of relate to, man, right? We all kind of get out with some kind of, some kind of baggage. And then it was cool to hear that, like you leveraged the one resource that you had to kind of open up doors. And I've, I've heard, you know, let's be real, some horror stories of different platforms that can connect you to mentors, but the mentors really don't do much around other than just look at their watch and be like, all right, time's up. I did my time and don't do much. So it was cool that you were able to maximize that time with a, with a mentor and um, kind of work through his network, in other words, because I think a lot of veterans don't know how to, you know, understand that maybe the person in front of you ain't the person, but how do you work through their network and be clear enough around request, things you want, um, that could be a win-win for the person you're talking to, but how do you build through people's networks or get what you want through people's networks while having them see that it's a win for them as well? Um, how would you, how would you communicate that? Because you're excellent at that, man. From the minute we connected, I mean, you were to say, Hey man, we got to do this. We got to do that. And I was like, man, like I want to do this and that for you. And it was like a bromance from immediate. So how have you been able to, how have you been able to create that kind of energy around you, man? Man, that, that honestly, it, it was a genuine approach that I had. I knew that my life depended on it, right? I've got a family. I need a job, but I didn't want a job. I wanted a career. I wanted happiness. I wanted to find what's the next challenge that's going to excite me. And in my head and hindsight, it was money. And so I, that's what I was going for. It's like, oh, okay, well, I did this in the army. I'm marketable in the civilian sector. Granted, I, I don't plan to fly helicopters, but my time as an officer and manager and leader, I can apply those skills. So the first mentor I had I had to fire because he was he was a military guy himself um, that was now in the corporate sector and did not give me really anything. I'm, I'm doing all the work and, you know, he's missing phone calls. And so it's almost like a mutual accountability thing when I went through this program. And then I found another one and it all worked out great. This guy being from Memphis and. You know, he was very tied in with the leadership at corporate. And basically, I asked him, you know, that's the thing is like, you've got to be willing to ask for those opportunities. You can't expect mm. people to just roll out the carpet for you. You've got to demonstrate that you're interested and in that, mm. you know, if it's something that you want to do. True. And, and so, but then on the flip side, once I got to international paper, I wanted to pay it forward. And so I joined ACP as a mentor. And the first candidate I got, I did the same thing. It's like I fired him. I told ACP he is not interested in in this program. He's looking for a handout, and that's what I'm trying to tell you know military trend. Like you're not just because you were a squad leader or you did you know all these amazing things. Truly, if you don't take the time and and the effort to actually apply yourself, getting out you're going to get garbage jobs and you're going to complain about, you know, veterans not having um, the interest of, of, you know, the civilian sector. It's like, no, own, own up to what you need to accomplish and put in the effort and you will be successful at the end of the day. Yeah, no, that's a great message. And it's funny how you went back around and became a mentor of ACP, right? Um, and that is a lesson that I think a lot of ambitious vets need to hear. What is the mothership that helped you win when you're getting out of the military? And how can you go back to add value to that mothership that helped you win and kind of stack off those motherships? You know it, what I mean? It, man, it, I'm just, I'm recalling my, the time when I went through that. And it's, all, it's always in life. It's the, the small details and I, I'm, I mean, that's from the military, too. It, it could be detrimental to an operation or catastrophic. And, you know, I've got lessons learned from the military where we didn't pay attention to, to the small details and lives right. are lost. Right. Right. And so apply that, you know, when you're trying to find a job or find a career or even go off and do your own thing, if you don't do the little things well, and I mean, like, I was getting a resume from, from a guy I was mentoring and he didn't even bother to spell check it. Like that's free. You know what I mean? So do the work and show that you are committed and things will work out mm. instead of expecting a handout. 
Do you think that's alert? Like, and I'm, I'm just, I, this might be a stupid Marine question. And I ask a lot of stupid Marine questions. All right, army officer. So like, do you think it comes down to like willpower? What do you think is the differentiator between that? Cause there are, there is that stigma of veterans just wanting a handout. How do you help me? How do you just help me get something so I can shut my wife up or my husband up? you know, stuff like that while I'm collecting disability. What do you think, it, what do you think is the differentiator of veterans that really want to win at a big level post-military? I think it is a major, willpower is a major component of it. And, and having that drive, I mean, in the military, you're told what to do. And a mm -hmm. lot of times it's you execute or there's going to be uh, repercussions, right? So the repercussions here being you're not going to have a line of support for your family or yourself, and you're going to go down a very dark hole and you'll blame the system when it was on you. Like you have got to have accountability for yourself and be responsible. Now, there are things that you're going to be better at than others. Like for one, you know, 10 years in the military, you're writing evaluations, you're learning how to write. And, and so I, I felt like I was able to Maybe I had an advantage to writing a resume, but I've never written a resume. And so what did I do? I, I mean, I Googled. It's like, that is your friend. Uh, I, I used my network of civilian friends and even, you know, prior military, prior service guys that were now in corporate. I'm like, hey, look at this. And I, I want candid feedback. Hmm. Don't sugarcoat anything. If what I'm writing makes no sense or it's not going to benefit me then tell me and, and I will make changes from there. So like I ended up being, you know, 25, 26 different versions of my resume before I finally released it. But I had to do that stuff <laughs> at night when I wasn't, you know, in my command role uh, during the day. And so it's like, you got to set aside the time and man, just don't be lazy. Yeah, no, that's that's the message there is how do you feel your willpower and not, and not be lazy, right? Don't get caught up in this entitled mindset. But, you know, that's a great segue, brother, right? Um, you know, you were a guy that went from an international paper mill um, to now, you know, <laughs> overcoming the biggest fear barrier that a lot of veterans have, like going back to potentially no stability post-military. But I don't want to steal your thunder on this what was that process like? Walk me through that process and the other ambitious vets that are listening to this show are on what it was like to overcome fear and jump into the thing that gives you the most fire underneath your ass, which is this cheese dip company. Dude, I, I don't want to, you know, give you the, the answer right away. I kind of need to lead up to this because it kind of defines who I am as a person and what my life has been like. And I've been very fortunate, you know, my, my parents were, were very hardworking, although I would say more on the blue collar side. And, you know, they, they took out financial aid and everything to put us through a private education to give us an opportunity. And whether it was just my lack of willpower at this point, um, or just kind of, um, well, I guess, well, what, how would I describe it? Maybe um, abilities educationally. I, I was not a great student. You know, I was always middle to, to bottom of the pack. I mean, grade school, high school, and and even in college, I, I, I did not, I would say, like, excel by any means. So I, I always have just been, I think, you know, on that or at least perceived as the average and I, or at least I self that was my own self perception. And so I struggled a lot. Um, and by the time, you know, I, I get to um, going aviation and flight school, like uh, it's, it's a blessing that I'm, I'm even there, you know, like I'm in a high caliber uh, with, with, you know, my peers are, are high performing and I, and I still look at myself as like, man, I don't belong here, but I got to do my best. Right. Oh, feeling. And, yeah. Yeah. And, and so, you know, fast forward through, through my career as an officer and a pilot, right? Like what came natural to, to my peers, it, it was almost impossible for me to accomplish. And, you know, everything from flight school through, you know, it just, flying the helicopter itself. It's, a, I mean, for one, it's one of the hardest things imaginable, but 
uh, I always struggled with feeling confident. Like I lacked confidence in, in what I was doing because I felt like I wasn't capable. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and maybe it was because I wasn't happy with what I wasn't like super passionate about um, flying helicopters, but I thought it was cool. And, and along the lines, people always told me what was best for me in my career. Mm -hmm. And maybe that that's how I got to aviation. Well, then after my, after my platoon leader time, you know, I went up on staff and I was the battalion S4, which is like the logistician and supply officer. And I did so well at this. Like I was uh, basically rated the top officer in the brigade of logisticians. And here I am as an aviator. So I loved doing this and I wanted to transfer. And I was told you shouldn't do that. That'll be bad for your career. And, uh, and so I didn't. Right. So I, I end up going and, you know, have a command role. And I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. Like I wouldn't trade that for anything and flew, you know, um, nine months in Afghanistan and, and led a company of 40 people. But all along, you know, I, I'm making mistakes and I'm, it's almost like self-defeating to where I'm like, it's all my fault. I'm not good at what I'm doing and, and I'm not equipped to do this role, even though, um, you know, I'm told, Hey, you're doing fine in my head. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not. Mm -hmm. And so getting out of the military was kind of like, all right, this is my chance to start over. And I go into this corporate, um, corporate thing, a corporate role after the paper mill for three years. And I'm excelling, like I'm doing well. And I'm like, all right, well, maybe this is me. But with every promotion, I'm I like more money. It, it's it's like my happiness is just taking a hit. And I've got this amazing family and, you know, this home that I, I'm just very thankful to, to, to have, but I'm not happy. And I hit a wall, you know, and that was kind of around the pandemic time frame. But my passion, this is where it goes back to, like, what drove me, you know, it was my passion. It's always been food, man. Like, I wanted to go to culinary school back when I was in high school. But, you know, I was told not to. Again, always doing what people told me to do and not what I wanted to do. And when I started this, I was like, this is a way for me to live my passion and overcome my fear, my fear of failure from my insecurities of everything, you know, it's like worrying about what other people thought of me was my biggest obstacle. And I knew that if I could figure out a way to do this and it made me happy, then there is not a wall that I could not break down. And that's what's gotten me to this point is, is just, living a dream. I mean, it sounds cliche, but like I'm living a dream, man. You know, I have my own business. It's named after my father who I've always, he's my hero, right? I've always looked up to him and, and, you know, this is his recipe. It's like, if I could do this and create an opportunity, not only for, for my family, but for me personally, like prove to myself that I am worthwhile. Like I am I'm capable and, and I can do this. And it's like, man, there's nothing, there's nothing that can stop you, you know? And that's what the message I'm trying to, to hopefully, you know, transcend is that find your, your, your purpose, find your passion and do whatever it takes to get to that point. It's not going to come overnight and you're going to fail. And I've failed more than I've succeeded in this business, but people would never know that. And but sit down with me for an hour and we'll, we'll talk about all the failures. <laughs> so, um, but it's, it's just been an incredible thing for me and, and for what I want to do. And this isn't the last thing I, I'm, you know, one day my plan is to sell this and do something else or maybe just help people. Cause that's another passion. It's just like, how can I help someone else? Because selfishly it, it means more to me than probably what they're receiving. Yeah, no, that's great. I love where the heart is. And also, brother, I think you keep saying this throughout the entire conversation, but doing what you want to do versus what other people are telling you to do. And I think it's so easy to fall into that cognitive bias when you're first out of the military. In other words, ambitious cognitive bias is like, just think about you in the military and just everyone telling you, hey, you know, to become shit hot and anything, you got to do X, Y, and Z and not anything else. 
It's just in the box, right or wrong type thinking. And, um, you know, you really did a great job as far as jumping out of that. Uh, but also, man, you just seem like a guy that's super great at just finding information. Um, very resourceful. And where do you think that comes from, brother? Man, I, I think the heart of it is just, you know, being a good person or trying to be a good person and never advancing yourself or your career at the expense of others. And I went through it, you know, and I, I know a lot of guys have been through way worse than me, but I've had, you know, very significant failures in life, you know, in the military, um, in college and, and, and even in corporate. Right. But it's like, I never wavered in that I was going to jeopardize my character, my integrity at the expense of others or advancing my career by stepping on anyone else's neck. And I saw the worst of it in the military, man. It's, it was so political. And um, I think that's one of the reasons that it was so easy for me to, to get out. It's like, I'm done with this. Like, I, I can't pretend to be uh, something that I'm not anymore. And same thing on the corporate side, right? And so I think just, man, having the network of people that I have created over a lifetime of just being a good kid, you know, trying to be a good kid and, and doing well for others. Um, and I, I honestly think that that's something that has to be true to your core. You can't fake it, but you can work on it if it's not something that's there. Yeah, no, I love it, man. It's down to your core. Can you tell us a little bit more about Arbo's cheese dip? Kind of what got what got it started? You know, it's definitely what you've said is a family family recipe. Um, but I mean, kind of tell us more about it, and um, you know where where we potentially can find uh, find it in our local communities or or wherever. Yeah, so um, this is a, a formula. It's a recipe that my dad's been making for thirty years, and um, everyone's always told us like, "I've oh, got to figure out how to get this on the store shelves," and you know, it was always just kind of a fleeing thought, but sitting around a fire pit with some buddies during the um, kind of the beginning of the pandemic, this light bulb went off and we were all joking about how we hated our jobs. And I just said, I'm going to, you know, make my dad's cheese dip. And one of them was like, hey, man, if anyone's capable of doing this, it's you. And that was it. Someone believing in you almost just gives you the confidence to, to learn, drive forward, educate yourself and figure it out. One of my commanders um, back in the day, you know, although this didn't resonate at the time, but uh, I went into him, went and talked to him about something that I, you know, was so frantic about uh, and I didn't have a solution, but I brought him the problem. And he said, he just turned around and he was like, fit foe. And I was like, what? You know, he's like, figure it the fuck out. <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, damn, dude. Um, what, what do I, what do I do with that? But that, that really has been it. And that does come from the military. You know, I can talk about like how bad it has been, but people that have been there and supported me and, you know, my, my old standardization pilot, like, man, I wanted to quit. I wanted to quit so many times. I wanted to resign my command and everything else. And he wouldn't let me, he believed in me. And so it's like all these messages, they may not make sense at the time, but down the road, it, mm. it's, it's like, this is what it was all about. And so the cheese dip itself is kind of like the vessel to what I perceive my future being. And it's not just about making money. Cause I've already tried that. That didn't bring happiness, but the cheese dip, got me in. So I started it here in Memphis um, in January of last year, 2021. And I sold it in a, uh, a you know, full retail container um, by that May at one store. And then like then 10 more stores. And then four months after that, in August, I'm quitting my job because I'm in, you know, major distribution. And then six months later, like, Kroger gives me the the go ahead, but it's not like just because I had a good product meant that it was going to fly off the shelves. Like, man, it's the story. It's being a veteran. If you're a veteran, I'm telling you as a business owner, we are the future and you are not taking 
you're, you're losing so much opportunity by not going for it. So it's like, go for it, dude, get over what other you think other people might think of you or, uh, or the fear of failure. Right. So it's like, it, if, if you, if there's a will, there's a way and getting into all of these different retailers has just opened up so many more doors. Like I said, yeah, <laughs> I've met some incredible people through a nonprofit folds of honor that raises money for, uh, the service member. I'm sorry, the, the, the children and spouses of service members that made the ultimate sacrifice. And I mean, this is a group that said, Hey, Arbos, come on, man, we'll, we'll grow with you. And so they've opened up a lot of doors for me. And then most importantly, Bunker Labs, you know, which is a ex- veteran only or veteran spouse as well, entrepreneur Excel- accelerator program. And they have just mentored and been hands-on and have coached me and cheered me on this entire. And I, I mean, if it wasn't for Bunker Labs, I don't know if I'd be here. Um, I'm, I'm sure I could always go and go back to the whole FitFo thing, but they've made it so much easier, so much quicker. And um, I just, I challenge all veterans listening. If you got a hope, if you got a dream and you're passionate about it, do it because the opportunities are endless. No, I love it. I love it. And uh, you did figure it the fuck out. You found Bunker Labs. <laughs> you found Folds of Honor. Yeah. <laughs> figured oh, it out. Figured yeah. the fuck out quicker. Um, yeah. And I love the idea of it's a, it's not just a product. It's a story. It's a veteran. Like just know, ambitious vet, that you are, you know, you're a, a diverse company, right? That's mm-hmm. that's trendy. The story around your product that creates a cause. All that mm-hmm. good bandwidth. You don't have a business degree, do you? No, man, I'm a psych major. <laughs> uh, I, I, I tried to major in food service, but uh, the army was kind of like, ah, yeah, uh, and maybe to, change that. So to I'll grow take- this thing, to grow this thing as fast as you yeah. are, though, without like any kind of business background or degree, man, just being good with people and knowing how the mind works and, uh, you know, just building the relationships and nurturing those along the way. It's really impressive stuff, brother. Man, it's it's been so much fun, and it it just I don't see any other path um, to to my future for for me and my family, and hopefully inspiring others to uh, you know veterans specifically to be ambitious, be relentless, and go out there and kill it at whatever it is you're doing. Like do your best regardless of the situation. Like you can adapt and overcome. Uh, that's what we did. That's what we went through. So use that to your advantage. Perfect. Andrew, last thing I just end with is where can an ambitious vet go and uh, learn more about Arbo's cheese dip? All right. So um, our website is going to list out all of our locations, uh, arbosdip.com, A-R-B-O-S dip.com. And uh, currently, we uh, just made it into Texas. So all of the uh, major cities that have a central market, um, we are now on the shelves there. And then uh, we are launching October 27th with Kroger in five states. And that's basically all of Tennessee, Arkansas, Alabama, Kentucky, and Mississippi. Um, But, you know, that right now it's regional. My goal is... um, is for this to be a national household product one day. So um, hopefully soon enough, it'll be, na- it'll be nationwide. I bet it will. So I just want to sum this entire thing up, Ambitious Vet, by overcome your fear. Where are you not taking actions because you're hesitant, because you may fail? Where are you uh, thinking too much of what people think of you, right? That's the box you're putting around yourself, right? And these kind of results are are available to you if you're willing to kind of see those slow down and think like for, for Andrew's sake, he got time during COVID to kind of slow down, reflect, right? You hear these words of critically critical thinking, reflection, all that stuff. That is a superpower ambitious effect. So make sure you are doing those different kinds of hacks, life hacks, I guess you would call them hell, golden grenades, whatever you want to call them to make sure that your life is moving in the right direction. But um, Andrew, brother, I just want to thank you for being on the Ambitious Set Show. It's been an incredible honor. It was an honor, Chris. Loved I got to connect with you and uh, super excited for Ambitious Vet and what y'all have going on. And thank you very much for having me on, man. It was awesome. 
The Ambitious Vet is available on all popular podcast platforms. Go to vettrainingcoaching.com to subscribe, rate, and share with fellow vets. Ambush Vet, again, if you have time in your calendar from October 26th through the 29th, 2022, which is going to be probably a week from when this gets released, um, go register for the Military Infantry Conference in Las Vegas, Nevada. I promise you're going to walk away having gained some of the most deepest quality, influential um, connections that you've probably ever you know, probably made in a long time, uh, but also you've, you're going to explore ideas, ideas that you haven't probably explored before while also being inspired to find solutions and um, you know, walk away having more firepower to make the difference that you're committed to making in whatever industry that you are committed to making. Um, again, it's a full four-day experience. The festivities being, begin with a series of workshops with a jam-packed schedule of keynotes, breakout sessions, interactive experiences throughout the entire week. I promise you it will be well worth the trip and the expense. It's your job to get the return on investment from these kind of events. But go and check out militaryinfluencer.com. Again, that's militaryinfluencer.com. And make sure you get registered and share this along with anybody that you know that's trying to make a big difference and is a military veteran inside the world. Until next time, Ambitious Vet, hold the vision and trust the process. Take care.